Well, the plan will take shape on January 22nd. Uh, we will shift 48 officers, creating an additional district in East Oakland, going from two districts in, e in East Oakland to three districts. I think it's going to be uh, helpful in responding to crime much faster. It's going to be able to, to address violent crime, uh, and it'll put more officers in the community being able to engage with community. We, we know that East Oakland has seen the vast majority of our violent crime, including shootings and homicides. It also represents the largest percentage of calls for service. So it's really important that we balance our resources based on where we're seeing crime occurring, and that's what I'm seeking to do. Instead of there being seven beats in each district, it will now be five beats in each district. Less responsibility for each district, but also uh, same number of officers in each district. So additional officers there to be able to support those officers that are responding to calls. Well, I think it starts with prevention. It really starts with uh, putting resources out there, hopefully getting into the areas that are we see violent crimes uh, concentrated in and being able to prevent those crimes. But it also uh, relies on our ceasefire strategy. Really, group and gang violence has been the largest percentage of our violence, and so we want to use our ceasefire strategy to be able to address that violence. But not only from a law enforcement perspective, but from uh, a violence prevention perspective, allowing our Department of Violence Prevention to provide support and service services to those involved in violence, but also strong engagement with community, really having community members out there present, being a, uh, being a supporter, being a partner in addressing violence is important, but also their night, their night walk, walks that happen on Friday evenings where community members are out walking in the communities that are impacted by violence the most. I think when we can fully implement the ceasefire strategy, I think that will uh, prove, uh, I, I think, successful in the past and I think it will be successful again. When I took over as chief in 2021, shortly after my appointment, I created the Violent Crimes Operations Center. And that, uh, that group actually does undercover patrols. They do high visibility patrols, and they focus on those who have engaged in, mo in the most violent crimes in our city. Uh, they have been responsible for making over 60 homicide arrests. They also have made 200 uh, arrests of violent crime suspects. They also were a part of our recovery of over 1,200 firearms in 2021. So this group is highly focused and concentrated. They do both undercover work, but also uh, uniform work as well. We are really being data driven. We are doing operations to address the car burglaries, utilizing our crime statistics, our crime analysts provide us reports on a weekly basis that show us where the largest concentration of auto burglaries are occurring in our city. And then we, uh, we put resources in those areas to do operations to hopefully apprehend those that are responsible for those crimes. Uh, it really has been community driven, community members that are reporting these incidents as well as sharing that information so we know where we can put our limited resources to address this. And so we'll continue uh, to utilize the data to determine where we're going to actually deploy resources to address particularly auto burglaries. We have the ability to use bait cars. We also have the ability uh, to use uh, some technology equipment as well uh, that can be placed on cars so that we uh, can identify when a car has been burglarized and who is responsible for that. We know that our groups and gangs engage in car burglaries as well. They don't just uh, involve, they are not just involved in violent crime, that they also participate in some of these other crimes, which includes auto burglaries. So we focus our efforts uh, around uh, addressing these individuals who we already have intelligence on. And so as a part of our investigations, when we talk about our ceasefire focus, when a group and gang is involved in violence, we focus on every crime that they're involved in. And hopefully we're able to apprehend them and bring them into custody because we know that they're involved in violence, but also involved in those crimes related to auto burglaries. And I think that is one of the good stories that we can tell, is that early in the year, we've seen a huge spike in crime in Chinatown. Uh, I met with the Chinatown business owners, I met with the Chinatown Chamber of Commerce, and they had an ask, Chief, can you provide more presence in Chinatown? Can you get officers on foot? Can you make us feel safe in Chinatown? And I did. 
Uh, I utilized the additional overtime funding that the city council authorized to put officers on the ground working in Chinatown. And we've seen a dramatic decrease in crime in Chinatown. Now that doesn't mean that nothing's going to happen. And obviously the videos that we've pushed out recently show that someone committed a crime against a senior in Chinatown. But that's why we're really calling on the community to help us identify the person responsible. Chinatown is safer than it was. We are anticipating uh, a Lunar New Year uh, that will be, uh, I think, one in which people will feel safe in Chinatown because we will have a presence there. We are meeting with community members already in Chinatown and I look forward to a happy and safe new year. Well, it saddens me that Brown Sugar Kitchen is gonna be closing. It's a place that I've been to many times and have enjoyed meals there. Uh, I know that business owners are concerned about the level of crime that they've seen in the community. We continue to do our best uh, to deploy officers into our business districts to try to address crime. Uh, we are continuing to meet with our Oakland Chamber of Commerce uh, to hear from business owners about what we could do better. I think as we grow the department, we can reinstitute our walking officers and get more presence uh, in our business districts. I, I think that's what's important so that it, it's a deterrent to people coming into these areas to commit crimes. But you know, it's tough to see businesses leave, especially one that I believe is an essential in Oakland. Brown Sugar Kitchen was something uh, that I thought was a, a, very, uh, a very good restaurant to go to. Right now we have uh, currently 687 officers. Uh, we are authorized to go up to 737 officers. Our full, uh, our full staffing is 792, but 59 of those positions are frozen. 57, I'm sorry, 57 of those positions are frozen. How's recruitment going? Recruitment is going well. We just graduated an academy in December of 25 officers. We currently have an academy that has 36 officers in it. We look to start an additional academy in March with another 36 officers, and we have two more additional academies uh, in 2022. So we'll focus our recruitment around local recruits, trying to hire locally, but focus in on women as well. We've seen an increased number of women who have joined our department in our last couple academies. I believe that that's positive and we'll continue to see if we can grow those number of women that are joining law enforcement.